Good morning, you guys. Oh my gosh, Maya. This jar broke. Hurry, quick, give me a bowl. Here, let me, can you take that lid off? Well. <laughs> Hot dang, Maya. I really wanted that cream in my coffee. Man, losing a jar. It's like, it hits you different when you got a cow making two gallons of milk a day. What's the, what do you mean it hits you different? Those jars are hard to come by right now. No. Oh, yeah. So in the past when I've had my goats, I've always used like these half gallon mason jars. I can't find these anywhere. I've looked so many stores and I found them online, but they want like $50 for a six pack. And I mean, normally they're like $11 or $12 for a six pack. So I'm not paying $50 for a six pack. And I've been getting these gallon jars on Amazon, and I have—I I mean, I don't have a ton of them because I—I I mean, I don't have a ton of space to store empty ones. But I got one less now. I, I need to check that other one that was in there. It had more head space, so I doubt it burst. It bursted. I just need cream for my coffee. I got this other one and I hope it doesn't have any cracks in it. This one was in the front of the freezer. That other one that cracked was in the back. Plus this one had a little more headspace. We should have just stuck that extra in a little in other jar, but it wasn't enough to even fill a pint. So we just made one of the jars too full. All is redeemed. I have cream in my coffee. I very rarely turn a camera on before school because I'm getting my kids ready and stuff. But I just wanted to give you guys a little glimpse at this. Look at this loveliness outside the window. I love watching the sun rise above behind the epic tree and the fog on the pond. So pretty. Hey, bud. Hello. You having a rough morning? I'm tired. You're tired? Last night, we had friends over. And when everybody left, the kids were all excited. And they didn't go to bed till like 9.30. So they're gonna have a draggy morning. I'm gonna drink this coffee and get them to school and then we're gonna go milk hope. All right guys, it's time to go out and milk my beautiful cow. I did wanna give you an update. I haven't put a video up in the last few days because I really hurt my back and I shot a video the first morning that my back was hurt um, while I was milking and after that, um, it was pretty rough. I, I did manage to go through the weekend and do a couple things with my kids because they had some events and stuff that they were really looking forward to and I kind of like pushed through them. But other than that, I've done much of nothing. I've milked the cow every morning and I've done a lot of resting. And I'm still just a little bit sore, but much improved. I'm getting around a lot better. I feel better this morning than I've felt in the last four or five days, which is good because when mama's down on a farm in a home with a bunch of kids, it's a hard thing. I know it's been hard on Maya to have to kind of like make up my slack and make space for me to rest, but I'm feeling pretty good today. I, d I overdid it a little bit yesterday, so I'm gonna try to take it a little easier today, and I'm hoping by tomorrow I'll be almost fully improved. Hey girl, good morning. Good morning. Ooh, beauty queen. It's utterly amazing. It is utterly. <laughs> it's utterly amazing. Oh, girl, you are utterly amazing. We're still milking in the field right now, but this is temporary. Right now, um, Maya's working, I'll show you guys in a second, where our barn's gonna be. And I've had a lot of people say, oh, you really should build a stanchion. We're planning on building a stanchion, but Hope's not used to being milked in a stanchion. So we decided we would go ahead and get her. Um, Hannah had been holding her for me, and I wanted to go ahead and alleviate her of having to do daily milking and taking care of a cow she knew she was selling. And I figured if she was getting milked like this at Hannah's house, she could handle getting milked like this at our house. And it's going really well. Um, obviously, there are benefits of having a designated spot in a barn or 
having a stanchion, but this also works. And I think it's probably made it a little bit of a smoother transition for her because this is what she's used to. I am getting a lot better though, even with my back hurting really bad. I mean, I've been coming out here and milking and getting on average right, right at or over two gallons, which I feel pretty good about. Don't you, Maya? I feel good about milk. <laughs> you feel good about not having to be the one that's milky? I feel good about that too. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that we've been doing since I'm getting used to this, Hope's getting used to me, I'm getting used to her, is that I milk and then I switch buckets halfway through <laughs> and start fresh so that at that point if something happens and I lose the milk then um, I don't lose all of it. But so far I haven't had any issues with like a hoof in the milk or anything like that. In fact the way I pulled my back out was that I kind of like lost my balance and fell backwards and I was trying to save the milk and that's how I twisted weird and hurt my back. No, no spill milk. <laughs> I like, definitely should have just let the bucket spill, but hindsight's 2020, right? <laughs> Lick in the bucket. All right, now I'm gonna go get honey and let her in here with hope. Okay. Come on, little darling. Every morning after milking, we come in, we strain the milk and get in the freezer. Today I'm gonna be setting an alarm on my phone so I don't forget it in the freezer and break any more of my precious jars. And after I'm done with this, I'll go out and help Maya if he's not already done with chores. Eventually, milking will pretty much be my chore that I do on my own. But as of right now, I do not feel confident enough yet. Like handling hope, and that we're like steadily in a routine. So he stays out there with me, but we are working towards like, for the first handful of days, especially when my back was hurting because I just couldn't move very fast. Um, he stayed and held her on a lead while I milked. But the last two days, he's not done that. And he gets her set up, I start milking, and then he begins walking away because we're trying to kind of move towards what normal is gonna be. Eventually, like I said, we'll have a barn and we'll have to change it. Probably I'll have to adjust to that, but the idea is that my my hope in the future is that like our morning routine will be that we both go out and he goes and does the feeding chores and I go do the milking chores and then whenever we're both done we can kind of converge on the things that need both of our attention. Had a lot of the same questions over and over since I started milking and sharing this content. Uh, the first one is why aren't you using a milk machine? I will at some point buy a milk machine. I actually had a milk machine, but it was for goats. It was not one that could effectively milk a cow. Um, and I actually gave it to Bintern because I didn't use it. Um, I hate cleaning. I don't like cleaning um, and a milk machine if you are just milking like a single cow or a couple of goats it actually takes longer to sanitize everything than it does just milk the stuff by hand um, and so I will avoid uh, tasks like that if at all possible just personally I know some people don't feel that way but I just don't I don't like doing stuff like that so if I can like quickly go out and milk one cow and not have to sanitize all the tubing and all the different stuff um, I will we will get a milk machine because of Jeremiah's uh, disability and his issues with his leg. He actually cannot squat. He cannot like spend a extended time in like a bent position. And so milking it will prove very difficult to him. Um, he milked the goats and when we had more than maybe like one or two goats in milk, he would use the milk machine because it was just too difficult for him to stay in that position. So they definitely have their place. Um, I just don't like doing, I just don't like using them. But when we have like multiple cows in milk in the future, I would probably need one just because I don't, I don't know 
that I could, I mean, I probably could. I mean, I think you can do anything if you really like work yourself up to it. But hand milking multiple cows and getting several gallons of milk would probably be pretty difficult. And I just, it, the reason why I haven't gone ahead and bought one just in case of emergency is because I just haven't done the research and I don't know which one to get. And um, I, I need to put some time into it to decide and go ahead and get it ordered at some point here pretty soon. So the other question I get is why do you have to strain it? And you strain it because of any hair or you know pieces of straw or anything like that might have fallen into the milk. Uh, you wanna get those out, obviously. If the cow were to like stick her hoof in it or if there was any chance that like any sort of poop or anything got into it, obviously you don't wanna drink that. Uh, that milk would go to the pigs. They dig around in the dirt and eat things so they can handle a little bit of that, whereas we can't, we don't wanna risk getting sick. We do drink our milk raw, um, and that's gonna come down to a personal choice. Um, I feel that raw milk is very good for you after doing all of my research. I think eating living foods that are full of enzymes and bacterias and all of that um, is actually very good for you. And so that's personal choice. I know a lot of people will argue that and say that it needs to be pasteurized and by all means pasteurize your milk, but I, I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna drink it raw. And for some people, if say, like the cow twitched her tail into the milk or something and, and you thought there might have been a little bit of contamination, but it was contamination that you were willing to deal with, you might use that milk and pasteurize it or use it to make cheese or yogurt or something that's gonna be heated because anytime you're making something out of it, it's gonna be heated. We do try to keep everything as clean as possible and that is why some people choose to use a milk machine because it's completely closed and so there's less chance of contamination. Uh, but again, with that, you do have to sterilize that machine. Uh, and get it thoroughly clean so that you're not introducing contamination with a machine that could have, you know, like old milk trapped in ducks and stuff like that. You know, the thing I find so truly wonderful about homesteading and growing your own food is that you get to just make decisions for yourself and you get to do your own research and decide this is what I'm comfortable with. This is what I think is best. And this is what I want to create for and give to my family. Two gallons again. This makes me happy. Very happy. All right, well Maya had finished the chores without me and I stayed inside. It's a little later in the afternoon. Um, I came out here to get, to get the eggs, but I wanted to show you guys this also. So I have not planted this garden because my back has been so out that there's no way I could. I'm going to come out here this evening and I'm going to get my boys to help me and we're going to plant the cabbage starts. And I think with their help and with Maya's help, we can at least get this knocked out. I've still got time to get my garlic in, but we have not burnt any holes in this for the garlic because as it is right now, it's just helping keep the weeds from growing underneath there. Uh, the guys did mulch the walkways thickly with straw to keep any grass from growing up underneath these. And getting that cabbage planted is really the only thing that I have to do soon. I did order some asparagus crowns from Etsy. I found them on st in stock on Etsy. I will wait to post a link to that until they come. And I know that they're good because I'd hate to like share that as if it's a recommendation and then it not go well. But um, my plan for the asparagus is that I'm actually going to put together some of the metal Vigo garden beds that I have out like in front of our house. Um, and I'm going to put my asparagus in those because those metal beds will last a really long time. Um, and right now I can go ahead and get those started ASAP because with asparagus, the sooner you get it planted, the sooner you can harvest it. And I am doing it with crowns again, because the sooner we plant that, the sooner we can harvest it. And my plan is to measure off here where there's going to be a drive along this fence between the garden belt and the pasture and these pink 
uh, pink flags here. That's the window greenhouse. And I'm gonna put the asparagus beds kind of behind the window greenhouse. I may in the future do a separate asparagus patch as well in the ground where I can do like a much larger space. This was mostly because I really wanted to get it started now. And I think it's gonna look really nice because my idea is, is that right behind the window greenhouse, in the spring, the window greenhouse will be full of plant starts so it'll be really full of life but then as the season progresses and the window greenhouse is empty because in a hot place like this we really won't use that space through the heat of the summer uh, behind it if I've got these nice green metal beds and asparagus in them which through the summer asparagus gets really large and fern like I think it'll be a really nice backdrop to the window greenhouse so that's why I'm doing it that way function and beauty two things that I like to keep in mind when I'm planning my garden spaces my chicken started laying again, and I don't know where any of my egg baskets are. I have multiple egg baskets. I think they must be in the shipping container storage. I need to get in there and find them, but I have this bowl that I grabbed. It's actually by the door because it's a friend of mine's. Um, <laughs> and I'm gonna use it to gather eggs today. Hey birds. Hey pretty birds. Isn't this picturesque, this coop with the tree and the pond behind it? So we're moving the layer flock around this field here, which will eventually be the site for our house. Uh, we had them over in the garden belt, but right now there's not enough of them to actually scratch up the grass. You can use chickens to prepare a garden space, like put them on a tilled or tarped space and they'll scratch up grass and they'll eat bugs and fertilize it. But as it is, like this is where they were last and um, they're really just fertilizing the grass and I don't want to do that in the place where I'm about to start trying to kill it. Hey ladies, do y'all see our rooster? Isn't he beautiful? He doesn't have a name yet, but he sure is lovely. What do we have here? We have any eggs? Oh yes. You know, we decided to get our order a new flock of layers for spring from Murray McMurray Hatchery and our girls which had not been laying for i mean since we moved here all started laying full bore again i was like maya it's like they know i mean it is nice to have eggs again it definitely stinks on a homestead to be buying uh chicken feed and eggs <laughs> and that is inevitable during certain times of year and we moved them so obviously they had to readjust but I just thought it was hilarious that right when we decided yeah we're gonna go ahead and just start with a new new flock in the spring that uh, they all started to lay and we're currently getting about a dozen eggs a day which is really nice thanks girls thanks for the eggs We'd kind of stopped checking for eggs because it had been so long since we'd gotten any. And then we came out one day and we were moving the coop and there was like probably four dozen in there. So they'd been laying for a little while, a few days. They were all fresh still. I floated them all. Uh, so now I've been getting them daily. And it's been about a dozen a day. We have some hawks. Well, oh, those aren't hawks. Those are those are buzzards. I wonder what's over in the woods. We do have some hawks though that uh, live in these trees. It is really nice when you have stuff like that. We have two, we have two hawks that we've seen. I don't know if it's a pair. I don't really know enough about hawks. I do have somebody I could ask. My friend Steve, Sunflower Steve, he knows about birds like that. I, I've seen two, and they talk back and forth and the trees to each other. I was a little nervous when we put our chickens out here and when we put our meat chickens out here, especially when they were really small, that we might have issue with like birds of prey, but we've not had any issue at all. Like they haven't, they haven't messed with anything. So hopefully it stays that way. Well, I don't have much coming in from the gardens yet, just some lettuce, but we do have those efforts underway. And I feel really glad that on our farm, we are now getting a steady supply of milk and eggs. Uh, soon we'll be processing those meat chickens um, and then going through and processing a couple more hogs this um, late this winter. And so, it, I mean, we're back into a place of producing food on our farm in a really short time and that makes me really happy. And then uh, by spring, we'll be getting all these gardens in um, and in, in, in full swing and we will really be 
uh, getting it done as far as putting food in the pantry. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.